Scott Walker, and this is Walks by the Fireside. So welcome back to Walks on the Wild Side. In today's video, I'm going to give you the top seven tips for new wildlife photographers. At this time of year, there's a lot of people getting new gear. Perhaps you got something in the Black Friday sales. Perhaps you're getting a camera for Christmas. Or maybe you're planning to get something in the Boxing Day sales. Whatever the case may be, if you want to use that gear to shoot wildlife, stay tuned because this is the video for you. <coughs> Tip number one, learn to use the gear you've got. It can be tempting as soon as you get into wildlife photography to go out and buy bigger, fancier lenses and more kit that you think will enable you to get the shots that you want. But if you don't know how to use the camera, all that's going to happen is that you're going to end up with the same kind of photos you had before you bought that gear and your pocket's going to be a hell of a lot lighter. <coughs> Tip number two is practice, practice, practice and even more practice. It doesn't matter what you're going to shoot, it could be a robin, a squirrel, I've got a million photos of really common wildlife, but it's practice, and practice will make you better. Even now, the first thing I shoot on a day will often be the first thing I see, which might be a squirrel or a tit or something really common, but it gets me in the right mindset for the rest of the day, and that's important. And remember, there's no such thing as just a pigeon. People have won photography competitions with photos of pigeons. So the more practice you get, the better. Wherever you are, whenever you can, take your camera with you and get as many shots as possible. <coughs> Tip number three is get to eye level with your subject. I've spoken about this before on the Grey Seals video and the Urban Wildlife video, and it gives you a much better photograph. Most photographers know to move backwards and forwards, left and right, side to side, but they don't think to move up and down. Most photographers will take the photograph from their eye level, not their subject's eye level. So if your subject's on the ground, you need to kneel down, you need to lie down. If your subject's up high, you need to find a structure which you can stand on that's going to get you as close to them as possible. You need to put yourself in your subject's world. Get to your subject's eye level and you'll find you get much better composed pictures. And moving on to tip number four, and that is focus on your subject's eye. Can you imagine in any other form of photography where the photographer wouldn't get the eye in focus? Imagine a wedding photographer photographing a bride with her veil trailing in the wind and the veil was in focus, but her eye wasn't. That wouldn't be acceptable. The same thing goes for a portrait photographer taking a photograph of a model, a, a headshot. If the photographer used an aperture that was so wide, the tip of the model's nose was in focus, but the eye wasn't, it just wouldn't be accepted. And the same thing goes in wildlife photography. You want to focus on the eye. It makes you see into the soul of the animal. It gives you some empathy for them, and it helps to put you in that animal's world. So focus on the eye, it's mega important. So tip number five is take the time to learn about your subject's habits and behaviours. I include a lot of this kind of information in the videos that I make, and that's for a really good reason. If you understand what your subject gets up to, you're much more likely to put yourself in a position where you can capture them doing that thing. It also means you can tell a better story. Remember the Kingfisher video? In fact, I, I'm going to get a photograph to show you. This is a photograph I have on the mantelpiece at the moment above the fire. And it's an image that I call King of Punks. And that's because this Kingfisher's head looks like a punk rocker's head with it, its hair spiky. And you might remember that this is because the chicks um, need to get rid of their excrements and they turn their ears towards the light at the end of the tunnel that they nest in and they cover the parent kingfishers in their excrement and this causes the, the, the feathers to get covered in an oily type substance which makes it have this spiky look. So if you understand that then you can tell the story through your photograph, 
through the title that you give your photograph and through the words that you might put to accompany it wherever you publish it, be that on your website or Instagram or wherever. So if you understand your subject's habits and behaviours, you can properly explain to the audience what's going on. <coughs> Tip number six is to print some photographs. Now, if you print the photographs, you'll often see things that you don't see on the screen. And that's to do with the way that we observe things on the screen. We're very focused on certain things that appear on the screen and we almost become blind to other things. And that's often how people miss typos and things like that. They're focused on the wrong thing. But you print something off, you read it, you're much more likely to catch the typos than you are on the screen. It's a proven fact. And the same goes for your photographs. You're much more likely to see things that you might have missed when you're looking at them on the screen. Now I print all my own photographs and I wouldn't recommend going to that expense to start with. Until you're sure that you want to progress to that level, it's a, a, a lot of investment to go out and buy a professional printer that allows you to print off quality photographs and paper. Paper can be very expensive when you're printing at that kind of level and the inks also can be very expensive but it's a worthwhile thing to do. I, I want to show you three photographs that I'm currently living with so I, I have a period after I produce them where I will spend time with them on my wall usually in my office and if I still like them a couple of weeks down the line then I put them on my website and put them up for sale but I want to make sure that I'm happy to live with them before I ask other people to put their hand in the pocket and buy them. So the first one is one that you'll see coming up in a video next year. Um, and it's this lovely image of a J. Um, and I, I really like the colours. I think it, it's exposed really well. And I've had this on my wall for a while now, and I think as soon as I publish the Jay's video, I'm going to make this one available for sale. Um, there's another one here, which also you'll see coming up in the new year. And this one is a, a, a green woodpecker. And I, again, I, I really like the image. I think you've got some really nice colours coming through there. You often don't see in photographs the green woodpecker's tail. Um, and the tail is kind of a sort of bluey purpley colour. And so I really quite like that. But I do sometimes wonder if in the edit I ought to do something to bring those colours out slightly more. But I, I think this image is pretty true to the photograph that I originally took. And so I think I'm going to leave it alone. I, I, I very lightly edit my images. I don't, don't do an awful lot to them. So I don't like messing around with the colours unless I... I feel I really need to but that's that's another image that I've lived with and I really like and the third one I've got to show you um, is of a greater spotted woodpecker um, and again I, I, I like this image I think um, eyeball is sharp there's some really nice detail in the feathers it can be difficult to expose properly for birds that are, uh, are both black and white and I've only recently put this one up in the last few days, so I'm going to reserve judgment on this one until I've lived with it for a couple more weeks. But I think these are three images that you'll see in videos coming up next year. Um, but just a, a note on, on the prints that I make. Um, they're on quality paper that's 100% cotton. So there's no acid in the paper, there's no lingon, and these are the things that often cause photographs to fade. If you've ever been on holiday before and uh, taken your photos down to get them printed off, after you know five years, ten years, you notice that some of those colours start to fade. But if your print is printed on good quality paper and with inks that are also acid free, your image is going to last a lot longer and the, the, the combination of products that go into producing these kind of images are rated to last 85 years. So you don't have to go to the expense of printing these for yourselves. 
Uh, I would just take your top half a dozen photos each month down to your local photographic printers and get them printed off. It'll only cost you a few pounds, but it's well worth it because you're going to see things that you don't see on the screen. And as a result of that, it's going to make you a better photographer. <coughs> so the final tip of today is respect the wildlife. And I adhere to the nature photographer's code of practice. And the number one rule of that is that the welfare of the subject is more important than the photograph. Now, I've seen photographers out there doing questionable things before. Things like throwing stones to try and encourage birds to come out of trees, and that's just awful. There is absolutely no need for it, and there's no need to put an animal through that kind of distress just to get a photograph. And what's more, it makes it harder for other people to get those photographs in the future because the wildlife is going to be less trusting of the humans around it. Um, so really, really important for the sake of the wildlife primarily is respect it and make sure that its welfare is maintained at all times. So thanks very much for watching this video. If you're a new wildlife photographer, please get out there, get practicing, and I'm sure if you bear these tips in mind, you'll produce some really good work. For more information, you can check out my website, walksonthewildside.co.uk. I'm on social media, and if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. I also appreciate anybody who subscribes to the channel, so then you get notified of any new content I put out. So thanks very much, and I'll see you on the next video. Ah, ah, ah.